What is going on, people? This is the Face Mask Podcast. My name is John Alsace, and today I wanted to talk to you about some news that came down the pike. Some news that came out today about Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson has apparently asked teammates how they would feel about him asking for a trade out of Houston. Now, this comes after news that Nick Casario, Patriots' former director of player personnel, signed a six-year deal for $5 million a year to be Houston's chief. This, of course, comes in the aftermath of Houston finishing 4-12 and after firing Bill O'Brien four games into the season for making one of the worst trades I've ever heard of in trading perennial all-pro receiver DeAndre Hopkins, who should probably be in Canton one day, for an over-the-hill David Johnson and a pick. And this is all after O'Brien has failed to put a competitive team around Watson since he was drafted. And of course, the McNair family has long run one of the most dysfunctional organizations in football. And it's unfortunately a trend that doesn't seem to be ending anytime in the near future. The news is that Watson was told he would be involved in some kind of hiring process for a new GM, considering he's the QB of the present and the future for his organization. Watson signed a four-year $156 $156 million extension in 2020. But he was not involved in the Hopkins trade. He was not involved in the Tunsil trade. He was not involved in the GM hire. And he's angry enough to one out. And straight up, my view is, he deserves better than this. And there is a very good chance he is not long for use. Of course, this revolves around the idea that his new GM will trade his franchise QB away. But this has obviously been building for some time. And sometimes bad blood goes beyond repair. Now, I know he has no relationship with Nick Casario. And it might have not been the guy that he liked. But he just wanted to be involved in the process. And he might like Nick Casario as a guy. But it's pretty clear that this organization is run pretty sideways. So I don't blame him for wanting to get out. But let's take a quick look at what he has to work with with his current personnel. From a receiving standpoint, he's got Brandon Cooks and pretty much nothing else. Randall Cobb is stuck there making 10 mil a year next year because the Texans love bad contracts. His deb- dead cap hit next year is 12.5 million. Think about that. Randall Cobb. They signed him through to a three year deal where in the second year, his dead cap hit is 12.5 million. So he'll be there next year as a 31 year old slot machine. Fuller's a free, Fuller's a free agent. So he's going to be gone. And then there's often QT, Chad Hansen, Isaiah Coulter. They've got decent TEs, but let's be real, Atkins and Fells, they're not special. And Kahale Waring never saw the field. And I got to be completely honest with you. For a team that's run so badly, what's... I can't think of a reason why they would hold on to Brandon Cooks. His contract is pretty large. Seven next year. And he's set to make $12 million on the cap. And they can cut him for no dead money. So that there you go. That's a good contract for the Texans. But they didn't actually make that contract. They didn't actually proposed that contract that was the Rams the Rams did that the Texans just traded for him so again Texans love bad contract they traded DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson he was good in 2020 but at the end of the day he's still an oft injured 29 year old 
whose ceiling is pretty much RB2 territory. He's pretty much viewed in all circles as a has-been who's going to fade into irrelevance sooner than later. Duke Johnson is there, but he's 27. And let's be honest, he hasn't been effective since he left the Browns in 2018. And then we got to look at their O-line, ranked 25th by Pro Football Focus in their end-of-season rankings. And yes, they made a trade a few years ago for Tunsil, which helped move them out of the 30-plus range, but they're still only 25th. And that's with them spending multiple high draft picks on O-linemen the past few years. Watson needs more if he isn't going to be running for his life for the rest of his career in Houston. And let's be real, his defense needs to be talked about too because J.J. Watt has been rumored to be traded sometime in this offseason to free up some current and some future cap space. And with his eventual offseason move, the Texans really have no one of note to give opposing QBs any trouble. With J.J. Watt, they were ranked 30th in 2020 DVOA ratings by Pro Football Outsiders. And DVOA measures a team's efficiency by comparing success on every single play to a league average based on situation and opponent. So the Texans were just they were just straight bad. It wasn't that they were playing bad teams because DVOA as a stat takes that out of the equation. They were bad on defense this year. They'll be worse next year. So where should Watson even go? The Dolphins. The Jets come to mind. The Jags even. The Niners. The Bears, obviously. Even the Patriots. The Washington team. Really, I mean, we all know there are only four or five better QBs in the NFL than him. And then there are some teams that have young project QBs that they're obviously not going to be moving on from. But there should realistically be 24 landing spots for him. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think his team will let him leave? Do you think he sticks it out in Houston or goes elsewhere? And if so, where do you think he would end up? Let us know in the comments below. I am John Alsace. This has been the Face Mask Podcast, and as always, thank you for listening.